the network. This does link quite nicely to uh, another app that we were talking about off air, which you hadn't heard of before, uh, an app called Voisey, which yeah. is a like mobile music creation app and community for creators. So you can make your own beats on the platform and then you sing your own you know, original lyrics over the top using your like, iPhone microphone. The most common thing is just artists putting up their own like songs, very DIY, sort of very, very like lo-fi, just recording, singing into their iPhone microphone. And that's been getting a lot of traction. Now there's um, over 200 million downloads for the app and over, 100, over 11 million songs on the platform. And there was a story came out this month about the first <coughs> artist has been signed to a major label deal having been discovered on that platform. A uh, um, girl named Olivia Knight, who's better known as Pouty Face. She gained a lot of, like, a lot of like, profile on that, on that platform. And then the... Uh, Warner ended up signing her to a record deal based on being discovered on this platform. And um, it's got a lot of investment from um, some artists and some uh, inve- you know, and big investors. And it's sort of, it is you know, getting a lot of ground now. So this is another platform to explore for you artists out there if you're looking to try out new applications, uh, you know, instead of like TikTok and things like another fun one for songwriters, which I know some people have called the future of songwriting, you know, just having a, having a beat and just, you know, just freestyling over, over the top. And it's clearly, yeah, clearly getting some, clearly getting some traction. So it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. I'm looking at it now. Just like some videos, just get a, a vibe of the UI and what people are doing. Can you give a walkthrough from, um, like of what it's like to use Boise? And what that experience is like for people, why it's why it's even possibly becoming a thing. I think I haven't looked at it like massively closely, but I think the main thing about it is it's just very sort of off the cuff. You might just discover a beat going through the flicking through the app, and you know, hear something you like, you know, like some some instrument instrument instrumental, and be like, okay, you know, I can picture myself like doing something with this, and then you use that instrument instrumental, and then do your own sort of singing or rapping off the back of that just straight into your microphone recording it straight on the app using the beat and then posting the video so it's all very sort of like natural and all very instantaneous and it's that i think that is the main appeal of it is that it is just very very quick and it's not the pressure of making something from scratch necessarily obviously there is some quite intuitive like functions on the app to make your own beats as well right. if you want to and record over that but it is just a, a you know another platform for self expression essentially wow which I think is why it's becoming quite popular so essentially we're training the kids before we're training them to now make shorter and shorter music and things of that nature but now this app will train a generation to make music faster yeah i think another big marketing platform about it like you know another angle is that it's really honing in on like being a songwriter. So you'll just, you, you know, you'll just hear something that you like and you'll go instantly and just, you know, improvise vocally or, you know, or rap over the top of it. It's all, you know, in the moment and then building it from there. It might lead to something, it might lead to a full blown, you know, song or project from there. It's encouraging you to just go back to basics and just go trust your instincts on things. Yeah. But I just still look at it so much as a, a a training space because there's not 11 million people that I think really identify as songwriters, artists, yes, but I think this will force more artists who obviously songwrite to pay more attention to songwriting and those technical aspects of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because of course we know we... You know, there's those people who identify as songwriters and, and they do the songwriting. Uh, many of them obviously want to be artists or used to be artists. But once you get into that bag and you are doing that as an art form, they pay attention to the music and the formulas and hearing it, uh, hear it so differently. So this, when you combine, this is actually something that I'm, I'm seeing where I say for the first time, we talk about the ease, the amount of ease it is for people to create. 
And then we look at the other platforms and we talk about the ease it, it is to get your creation seen. All right, we go from DAWs, where now you can make your music digitally and fake instruments and all that stuff. It's like, all right, cool. It's easier for you to create. Doesn't necessarily make you better, if you, especially if you have the main general habits. Now you add the Instagrams and all those things, and then you eventually get to TikTok. It makes it easier and easier to make your music get seen, make you get seen. But now this is something that that would actually show promise of people becoming better right so it's easier or it's gamifying you know with real world benefits you getting better at the process of, of song creation in a way like even even if it's just tricking you into doing it because at some point it's like if you create easier creation easier awareness oh that just means a promise of more shitty music into the world right <laughs> but yeah, yeah, now yeah. if you force them at that front end to at least you know get more of that practice um, whatever that looks like i haven't been all the way into the detail it seems like now we might generally we might truly be getting to that optimistic ideal of more good music faster a world with far more good music because you have the ability for indies to get through into the rest of the world without as many gatekeepers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But um, yeah, so I don't know, man, it's, it's cool because every part of the assembly line is being attacked slowly, but surely through technology or you know, attacked is a, is a, a skeptical, pessimistic word um, to use, but every part of it is, is getting technology integrated into it. I wonder what part of the process we aren't, we haven't really thought heavily about next that hasn't done it, but could use that innovation. Well, where, where this has been clever, I think, Voisey, is that it's clearly in the past on Instagram stories and and, and, the, and posts and on TikTok, yeah. artists, you know, will, we know bounce ideas and sing demos and just, you know, freestyle on these videos and post them and, and post them on the platform. Right. Here, so Voisey has taken that idea but put it in a purely music focused setting. So all the people on there are going to be music fans and, and potential you know, songwriters and you know, collaborators. So right. it's purely a music platform and you can do exactly the same things you would do on other social media platforms, but in Voisey and then potentially, you know, get advice from people in, in the same community and, you know, in the same space as you and build from there and grow from there and keep throwing out ideas and building on that and maybe working with other people. So it's taking a very small part of a larger, of a larger, you know, companies like work and you know put it into a very concentrated app which is what you need to do really if you're like a niche startup like don't try and copy and reinvent like tiktok or instagram like take yeah. your little subsection of it and really hone it in and that's what i've done really well i feel true that that's very well said man and it's legitimate artist development in its way and i think that even goes back to getting better faster and, and higher quality because if you're focused if you're in a in an environment of just artist yep yep that judgment goes way up <laughs> exactly yeah. in terms of what that looks like you know so that's gonna if you decide to thrive on that platform it's going to force you to get better and i and you said that i forgot her name but she got signed you know to warner chapel or whatever um after yep. bu building a good following on there so that makes me think what does that following look like um you know, what really makes people follow? Is it collaboration almost from an incentive of, hey, I'm following this person because that's a part of collect, getting to collaborate with them and I want to collaborate with them because their skill set is so high or, or they, I mean, they're just that good or, or they match or am I literally following them from a purely admiration standpoint, which is a pretty high praise coming from other artists. But I wonder what the, the, uh, the user psychology is for following on that platform versus other platforms because of the professional skew. Yeah, I think a lot of people have bought into her sort of personality and aesthetic as well as, you know, and obviously her singing as well. I think they bought into more of her as a, as a brand, like being called Pouty Face as opposed to going in there with her, you know, her own name. She was sort of going in there within a, a persona, person, mm. you know, per se. And um, I think she really had 
market herself as a, as a, as a brand. She's just working as a, I think she's working in a supermarket alongside it at the time. Um, not thinking too much of it, you know, just, just, you know, using the app as other users would do and just doing her thing and, and ended up taking off from, you know, growing a following from there. But, That's interesting. Um, yeah, I would have to get, I'm going to, I definitely want to talk about this again because I want to be able to have more context for the app uh, myself. But if with the app being more of a professional thing, it's interesting that you noted that she came in with the brand and the pouty face, not her regular name. So it could be one of those things or spaces where bringing a more social, a general social media type character into that environment where it doesn't sit as much because it's more professional could get you attention faster, which ultimately, you know, unfortunately, you know, it still works and not, and not that she did it in a bad way, but, and it makes it very hard for apps to remain what they said they were, right? Like LinkedIn has become a different type of social network than, you know, professional looking for jobs and all that stuff and, mm -hmm. and certain content. It can, it's more of a, it's a professional work, uh, Facebook, or it's a, it's like a Facebook for work, right? That you would send to your other people, like other people that you work with enough political correct, but it's still interesting. And y'all are still like shooting the shit or it's all water cooler. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, so it's a water cooler. That's what it is versus, you know, obviously the rest of social media can go anywhere, but that still is very different than where it started and its core intention. So I wonder if this will face some of that same thing over time where, you know, you'll have those people like, ah, this isn't about music anymore or songwriting or, or whatever that is. But it's just the nature of human humans and trying to scale these type of platforms that requires attention and, and group. Um, by uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think necessarily. But uh, it's not professional in a sense of how you know how the app is perceived. It's in in the PR right. and marketing. It's it's you know marketed that way as being for songwriters right. and for being a bit more, you know, for the not not for the casuals. But in terms of the actual people who download it and the way they use it and do music on there, it is it is very very social media casual, like you know, like like you would see on a TikTok feed. It is that way. So I feel that the company will face a decision in which direction to lean towards you know, mm -hmm. at some point, but I don't, I don't think it is like a, a really professional thing. And, and it's not trying to be saying that it's not, it's just very, it's very, right. care, very carefully taken bits of other apps that work well. And so if you're an artist, you know, watching now, you want to check it out. If you're someone who does like to, you know, post demos on Instagram and on TikTok, you know, just, and just, you know, sing and improvise and have fun with it. Then it's the perfect platform to do so because it's targeted at people who want to listen to your music, not not everything else as well at the same time. Right. See, so when I say professional, I know what you mean. It's not that uptight, professional, a certain template and way of doing things. What I mean is, it seems like a platform like that 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 markets towards songwriters, right? Well, even when using that term, people who identify with that type of stuff typically have their own rules of what that culture means mm -hmm. and what you acknowledge and pay attention to just like regular artists versus, Oh yeah, you're commercial and your music's blah, blah, blah. Right. So well, I'm just thinking that one, once you get that culture of people who think that way to look, um, who likely will be early movers, they'll create that culture in a lot of way, ways that's, its own version of whatever people consider professional, or maybe another word is whatever the subjective version of high quality is. It will be their version of it. Then people start blowing up on there, right? And, and then why are those people blowing up? Are they doing some stuff that's vastly different that got attention? People copycat that. And then just in general, people who hear that other people are blowing up on this thing, and I'm just a an artist or somebody looking for an opportunity and I'm not on the app because I wasn't attracted to the songwriter or that type of thinking in that process, but I am seeing somebody has what I want by using it. Now I'm going to come in with less care for that culture that other people care about on the platform. It is. And, and so it's more of a, more of a human nature, early mover maturation 
um, yeah, yeah, argument that I'm looking at more than yeah what the general or traditional version of a professional might have looked like. I, I think that's the wrong word, but I see I'm on YouTube looking, and when you look it up, there's all kind of people that there's this this culture of how to use the platform and how to grow fast on Voicey. Like people are taking it seriously already, which is which is interesting because I. I hadn't heard about it until you told me about it today. So I want to look into it for sure. Yeah, it, it certainly feels like it would be, it, its direction will be dictated purely by the users at this point. There's been a clear, you know, it's, it's, it's been launched as, as one thing, you know, but I don't think they, I'm not sure the, you know, the developers will, will keep it, you know, honed in on that one thing. I think it will let it naturally go and do its own thing as it's because a very community based app in the first place. So I feel interesting to yeah. see. Yeah. It's the Matt way.